Hello everyone, welcome to What If Corkless Deku Was Adopted by Batman and Becomes Green Robin Part 1. Before we start please go support Just Redhead for writing that awesome fanfic. Izuku is still corkless, but as a child he finds someone who utterly changes his life. Chapter 1 Your son is corkless. The toe joint proves it. Sorry kid, you should give up on being a hero. These words stuck inside Izuku's mind. He was shocked. He tried to stop tears. His mother, however, she took it differently. She was angry. What? Are you sure? Doctor looked at the mother. Yes, it's how we can tell. If he had a quirk, we couldn't see this joint here. He says showing joint on a X-ray photo of Izuku's foot. Izuku and his mom were coming home. Izuku was clearly sad, tears falling down his face. Inko Izuku's mother had different thoughts on her head useless piece of trash. I have to get rid of him. They were going next to park when she got an idea. Honey, don't cry. I'll go get some tissues and water to store. Wait for me here, okay, honey? She put the best fake smile ever made and she pat his head. He only nodded. And so he waited an hour or two until it was evening. He decided to lay on the bench he was sitting on because he was getting tired. Meanwhile, an American businessman was going through the same park. Bruce Wayne was coming back from one of press conferences in Japan. His business was growing, but he had different thoughts how could I be so incompetent? If I was a better hero. No. If I was a better father, Damien would still live. Tears were falling down his face. He needed to rest. He was depressed, overwhelmed by sadness. He was looking for a place to sit. Then he saw a bench close. He came from behind of it so he didn't see it was occupied by a child. He looks so peaceful. Like Damien in one F.O. those photos Talia showed me. He approached him, kneeled and shaked him lightly. Hey, young one, why are you sleeping here? The dark green-haired boy opened his eyes to show his emerald eyes to a stranger. Oh, it's nothing, it's just... Why are you crying, mister? Bruce couldn't hold back tears. His eyes reminded him of Damien's deep emerald eyes. Oh, it's... You have eyes just like my son. Izuka smiled. Maybe we can be friends. I'm sure we'll get on well. Bruce chuckled and sat next to the boy. I... We'll get back to that. Bruce looked at the boy. So, why are you sleeping here? Where are your parents? Mom said she's going to buy a tissue and some water. But it was early at the day, and now... Izuka looked at the sky. It was dark since it's 8 p.m. I see. Do you remember your address? Yes, it's XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Closest Hotel Alfred, I have one more thing to do here, we'll stay here for the night. Next day they went to City Hall and Bruce officially adopted Izuku. They went to a mall and bought Izuku many clothes and then they flew to America in Bruce's private jet. When Izuku saw the mansion he was clearly surprised. He knew his new dad was rich but that was a bit of a over-exaggerating. They went inside, and when they went into the kitchen Izuku saw the bird of the night, Nightwing sipping coffee, the anti-hero, Red Hood making eggs and Red Justice vigilante, Red Robin reading a magazine, all of them in their vigilante costumes. Izuku's inner fanboy started to show as he was squealing in joy. So how was it when I was out? Bruce came into the kitchen just behind Izuku. After seeing what Izuku saw he mentally faceplamed. Three Robins turned to the doors and after seeing some kid, they froze in shock. Bruce? Dick almost dropped his coffee. Could you explain please? Tim almost tripped from his chair, but Jason, well. He pointed a loaded gun towards Izuku. You got five seconds to explain kid. Izuku yelped in fear and hid behind Bruce's legs. Daddy he's got a gun. Bruce faceplamed. Daddy? All three shouted in unison. Oh boy. After telling three ex-Robins what happened in Japan, Bruce turned to Izuku, who was lying unconscious on the floor. Change, then come back. We need to tell Izuku who we really are. Bruce came next to Izuku and sat next to him on the floor. When he got up, he looked at his father. Dad, there are Vijay, where are they? Izuku looked at now empty kitchen. Guys, care to explain? Bruce said then three vigilantes in their casual clothes came from outer doors into the kitchen. Maybe I, since Jay will be a hothead and Tim will scare him. Hick said as other two growled. He came next to Izuku. Hey there, I'm Hick Grayson, your older brother. Izuku looked at him with joy and surprised expression mixed on his face. And these two are your older brothers as well. This is Tim Drake, he said as he pointed at Tim. And this is Jason Todd, he said pointing at Jay. And I think you already know who we are. Yes, Nightwing Red Robin Red Hood. Izuku shouted happily pointing at the vigilantes. Name and person was always right. Wait, you all were Robins, sidekicks of Batman. So that means only one thing Daddy is a vigilante of the night Batman. He looked behind just to see Bruce in his Batman suit. No mask on smiling. You're pretty smart, Izuku. How did he? Jay whispered to Tim, but Tim simply shrugged it. Dino don't care. After that day Izuku began to train his body, head and spirit to be the next Robin. He's got a undercut, his eyes narrowed and he has very toned body now. He's currently 15 years old, he stands at 5 feet 9 inches. His personality changed. He's not shy, he's a very confident teenager who isn't afraid of anything, not that he's cocky. Oh hell nah, he hates people like that. He's currently training some taekwondo and karate fusion techniques in a sleeveless shirt, green training trousers, green hoodie which he tied on his waist and his white training gloves, with his signature red boots of course. Whenever he had to buy some casual boots he always went for a red high tops. Either Vans, Converse, or his newest edition LV Supreme X Air Jordan 11 Gym Red. It's not that he liked to flex, he just liked how they looked. Between kicks and punches he sees his father coming inside from the corner of the eye. He stops his training and turns towards his father. What is it, father? Do you need something? Chapter 2 What is it, father? Do you need something? Bruce waved his hand and as like for a command three ex-robins entered the room. Izuku was confused. Bruce simply pointed at Izuku and three vigilantes rushed towards him. Izuku got into a fighting stance. Tim came from left throwing the hook towards Izuku's face. Izuku simply moved, grabbed his arm and threw him towards other two. How many times do I have to say this? You have to be unpredictable, Tim chuckle. Jason was next. He pushed him off himself and ran towards Izuku, trying to sweep him off his feet, but Izuku jumped over him and ran towards Hick and Tim to finish them off. Hick has pushed him to the side, turned to where he last saw Izuku only to meet face to the fist. With Tim and Hick unconscious it was now only Jay, who was angry AF. He ran as fast as he could with a death intention towards Izuku, but his anger blinded him, and made very easy target to Izuku, who after uppercutting him, took his gun, readied it to fire and pointed it to his right. Come on father, now or never. After that, he unreadied it and threw it to the left. 
Bruce caught the gun. Put it on the ground and began to clap. You never stop surprising me, Izuku. Even I wouldn't took all of them so easily. Izuku simply chuckled. They underestimated me. That's what made them loose. Izuku swept the sweat from his forehead, got his hand closer to his mouth. Alfred, could you bring me a drink, as well as ice packs for boys? And... Hang on. Would you like anything, father? I'm fine, thank you. And that would be it. If it's fine with you, of course. He didn't get a response. Instead, Alfred came through the door with a waiter cart filled with all sorts of goods. What type of drink would you like, Master Izuku? Alfred, for the last time. Don't master me. Just Izuku is fine. And could I have a cold water, please? Alfred gave him a bottle of water. I'm sorry, Master Izuku. It won't happen again. Will you ever learn? Izuku thought Chukling. Izuku, we need to talk. Bruce said sitting in his armchair, close to a fireplace. May I sit, father? Izuku said looking down. Of course. It's your house as well. Izuku sat in armchair in front of his father's. I want you to officially be a part of Teen Titans. I... I can't, father. Bruce was taken aback. Why? I appreciate everything you, Mother Tim, Hick and Jason did to me for the last eleven years. But as far as my memory can go, I always wanted to be a hero, graduate UA High School in my homeland and be a proper hero. All those missions with Titans, patrols, trainings with you, the boys. I really appreciate it, but I have something to prove them. A quirk doesn't make a hero. All those who called me a reject will change their mind. I want to prove it not only for the sake of revenge. I want my spirit to finally heal after the rejection. If you don't mind, of course. He only met a tight embrace of a hug from his father. After a couple of minutes in the embrace, they parted. How can I say no to those emerald eyes of yours? We'll go to Japan in two days for a party of a Yayorozu family. They are partners of our corporation in Japan and they want us as honor guests, you included. After that, we'll buy a house there. Not as big as Wayne Manor. But it'll have to do. And we'll get training for UA's test, as you won't accept any recommendation or any kind of cheat code. Bruce said just to be met with tight embrace from his son. Thank you, father. Two days later they arrive at Yayaroza Mansion. It wasn't as big as Wayne Manor but it was big, nothing more, nothing less. Izuku was wearing a dark green suit with a black vest and white shirt, tie in the same color as a suit and black suit shoes. The older Wayne just with an all-black suit and red tie. The Yayaroza family greeted them with all the respect. Ah, Mr. Wayne. Great to see you again. And this is your son, as I believe. It's great to meet you. I'm Hisashi Jayorozu, and this is my wife, Inaki Jayorozu. Izuka smiled and took hand towards Mr. Hisashi. It's great to meet you, I'm Izuka Wayne. I hope we'll get along. Hisashi shook his hand. Izuka kissed Inaki's hand as she took her hand to shook his hand as well. Oh my, a gentleman I see. My mother gave me a few lessons. Will we meet her? I always wanted to meet the woman who stole heart of your father. Hisashi smiled and looked around. No, sadly, Selina had her own meetings planned today. Bruce spoke before Izuku could say anything. Oh, that reminds me, we want you to meet someone Izuku. Inaki said as she excused herself from the conversation. After a while of talking about Izuku's plans for future, Inaki came back with Simeone by her side. Izuku's emerald eyes met with eyes of someone his age wearing a red dress, which showed her figure most of the girls would die to get. The girl had black hair, tied in a ponytail with the bangs on the left side of her face. Her cat-like onyx eyes pierced through his emerald eyes. This is our daughter, Momo Yayorosa. Momo took her hand towards Izuku. Hope we get along, Wayne Kun. Izuku did what he did to Inaki. Momo blushed significantly. That didn't go unnoticed by elders. Pleasure is all mine, Yayorosa san Then the music changed to something slow, not the let's slowly wiggle next to each other type of music, but something you could normally dance to. Speaking of pleasure, maybe we could meet each other in music a company? Two elder Yayorosas chuckled at Momo's reaction. She nodded, blushing madly. He took her hand and took her to the dance floor. They danced and talked about many things. Afterwards they went outside. They were in bower, cold air running between them. 
Izuku took his suit jacket off and placed it on Momo's shoulder. Thank you, Wayne Kun. No problem, Jairoza san. What are your plans? Which high school do you want to go to? I got recommended to UA High School. What about you? I'm going to take tests to UA in three months. I want to prove something to everybody. Oh, what's your quirk? I'm quirkless like my father. Momo was taken aback. Wait. Are you sure about that choice? Yeah. It was my dream for as far as my memory could go. Well, I root on you, Wayne Kun. Momo smiled towards him. Izuka took her hand, placed between his two hands, and smiled back. Thank you, Jayaroza san. Momo blushed madly. That smile was bright enough to make All Might's smile go underground. They talked a bit more and went inside again, to be met with their respective parents. Ah, there you are. We want to talk to you. Hisashi said, Momo and Izuka sat in front of them. We talked to Mr. Wayne and we agreed that you want to arrange a marriage between me and your daughter. Izuka cut him off which took all Yoyorosis by surprise. Bruce simply chuckled and said, Told you. Hisashi signed and gave him 2,000 yen in cash. Momo on the other hand blushed bright red, as red as her dress but she quickly hid her head in Izuka's jacket. So what do you say young man, would you take our daughter's hand? Izuka smirked, so did Bruce. No, Izuka said. Hisashi signed again and gave Bruce another 2,000 yen. Momo looked down disappointed. I won't do it, if we're destined for each other we'll get together ourselves. If we'll both feel mutual feelings to each other of course, and that needs time. So if your daughter and I bond in a way where our feelings are mutual and strong enough, I'll ask her to be Miss Wayne myself, but until then. I'll have to say no. Momo should be able to marry whoever she wants to. Momo looked at Izuku in amazement. Meanwhile, Anaki looked towards Bruce. How on earth did you predict that? She said as she handed him 10,000 yen. After party, Izuku and Bruce drove with Alf to WMJ which stood for Wayne Manor Japan. Which wasn't as big as the original, but big enough to give the weir rich A.S. Buck aura. And with that, three months of bad hell 2.5 began. Chapter 3 and with that, three months of bad hell 2.5 began. Izuku started training Tai his father by going plus ultra and doubling the amount of his daily trainings. Then they began on working more with weapons of all sorts, which Izuku already was good with like metal bar. He picked up against training with Tim one day and already knew it was his weapon of choice. But no hero can live with one trick up his sleeve and he trained with all sorts of spears, javelins and other spear-like weapons since it was his way of doing things, not to degrade the time of his training with other sorts of white weapons. He also trained his accuracy with kanais, shurikens and guns, a Christmas gift form J to be exact 416 Hong Kong dollars with silencer and tactical scope. Izuku trained with it to master all sort of weapons. Bruce gave Izuku an idea of training ninja weapons alongside ninja art of stealth, since it was his homeland tradition. He trained it to maximum in a short period of time, since Izuku knew almost all of martial arts, and he was a fast learner. Bruce bought Izuku Kusari Gamas, Nunchakus and some Katanas for him to master them. Before the UAs. Exam, Bruce gave him a stealth cat ring, which had two spies to do some lethal damage. Bat symbol was engraved on it as well. Izuku was confident, coming towards UA Hall, nothing could stop him. Girls were looking at him. Most of them blushed and whispered between themselves. Izuka could care less, he wasn't planning a relationship anytime soon. Bruce mailed Yui to let them Izuki use his equipment, they agreed. It. After reading response from Yue. Both Waynes already knew Izuka's gonna be a Yue student. Izuka came into an auditory hall after acing the written part of the test. He sat in his seat and began to listen to present Mick's explanation on the practical part of the exam until some blue-haired dude stood up and began moving his arms robot-like movement. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you said about three types of robot but on the panel behind you there are four robots, if that's a mistake then. He was cut off by Izuku standing up. Listen dude, sit down and let him finish, then ask questions. He was just about to say it is a zero-pointer, it isn't worth any points, it's just for a distraction. If you'd read the papers we were given when we came into the hall you'd knew about that. The blue Annette was shocked. He sat down and mumbled something under his breath. 
Izuka simply bowed towards present Mike. I'm very sorry for interruption, just needed to teach that douche some respect. Present Mike was a bit confused what happened there but he just rolled with it. After mixed lecture Izuka came out from changing rooms in his new suit, he never used it in any mission in America so he knew nobody will recognize him. He took a bus to his appointed place. He took his staff, which had a hidden blade located inside and configured his visor to give him information about bots. Meanwhile that same blue-haired boy from Auditory Hall walked towards Izuku. I'm sorry what happened at the Auditory Hall. Can we start again? My name is... He was cut off by present Mike screaming. Doe. Izuku jumped towards now open gates of the fake city. He ran inside and saw one ponter. Computer, K the training music please. He whispered as he ran with his bar with blade towards robot. After killing it back computer finally K the music. I can't make you play it. Play it if you want to. Izuku smirked as he ran deeper into the city, destroying robots left and right. Just as he sent last that was in the field of view, music stopped. Perfect. I should have about 75 points, not bad. Computer could you K. He was cut off by earthquake. He looked around just to see a zero pointer, coming his way, people running away and a brown haired girl, stuck under some derbies. Izuku smirked hard. Computer loop it. Full volume please. He ran at zero pointer. Meanwhile speakers under his cape started to play his training music as loud as they could. He threw three batarangs into the air. He ran towards the girl, helped her get up. Zero pointer was three steps from them. We're gonna die. Girl screamed in freer. Izuka simply smirked, threw a batarang on the street, behind zero pointer and looked at the girl. Brace yourself. He clicked a button on his wrist, three batarangs he threw in the air, got on both his legs and his neck. They exploded and Zero Pointer began falling towards two teenagers. A.H. It's even worse now. Izuku chuckled as he pressed button on his other arm and batarang which was in the ground began to emulate such strong magnetic field that Zero Pointer came to it as it was a nail to a neodymium magnet. Izuku took his mask off and carried the girl bridal style towards the entrance, where recovery girl was waiting for anyone who could walk. Her leg isn't looking too good. She couldn't walk. Izuka said in caring tone. Thank you, young one. You can go now. Izuka came home, trained eight, slept and that was his life for a week. He waited for his letter to Yue. When it came, both him and Bruce opened it in silence. A hologram of All Might popped and told them that Izuka passed in flying colors and he's the first quirkless that got onto hero course. They threw a big party, to which Yairoses were invited by Izuka personally. Izuka spent some more time with Momo. They enjoyed each other's company. And when it was time to part ways, they both felt empty inside. They already missed each other, but they didn't know why. Izuka woke up, did his morning routine and wore his uniform. Selina came to check up on him. Dear God, you look so great, sweetie. Thank you, mother. Izuka smiled back to her. After eating some French toasts made by Selina, Izuka got into his limo and drove to Yue with Alfred. That was his first step in being a hero. Chapter 4 That was his first step in being a hero. After coming towards Yui building Izuku told Alfred not to pick him up after school, he wanted some time alone to think about his relationship with Momo Yayorozu. He took his first step inside school. He was confident, seeing people his age showing off their awesome quirks only made him smile. He fixed his ring on his finger and went deeper onto the corridor looking for class 1A. When he finally got inside his eyes met a scene straight from anime, some blonde guy sitting with feet on his table, and the same robocop from auditory hall screaming at him so he can take his feet off of it. It's you! Buinet screamed, running towards Izuku, who took his stance to be able to counter any attack. Buinet saw it, and slowed down. Don't worry, I don't want to attack you. I'm Ida Tenya, from Semi Private Academy, I wanted to say sorry for what happened at Auditory Hall. He bowed perfectly 90 degrees five times. Dude chill. We're cool. My name's Izuka Wayne. Hope we'll get along. He took his hand for a shake, but then something in the blonde, who was getting scolded from Ida clicked. N.O. Bucking. Way. Both of them looked in each other's eyes. After all those years, I thought I'll never see you again, Izuku. 
He came towards Izuka with a warm smile on his face. Sorry, do we know each other? Blonde's face got a bit worried. You don't remember me, Ikin? Then Izuka's face got swollen with tears. Kakin, he ran towards Blonde and hugged him tightly. Oh. My. Godness Katsuki, we've got so much to talk about how's auntie and uncle? Oh my god! You're all invited to our house for dinner. I'll call father and ask maids to do more of whatever we're having. Just then Izuka remembered he basically flexed, he mentally face bland. Let me guess, you're a recommendation student. I hate those rich kids, they get whatever they want. A brunette with tape dispensers? On elbows said. If you want to know so baldy, I worked hard to get here. I was first at the both theoretical and practical tests. I could easily take down all AFU at once with two hours of prep time and with my newest present on me. All students shivered. Don't make a promise you can't complete. A yellow caterpillar came into the class. Most of the students were shocked. Ah, uh, Eraserhead, I guess you're our homeroom teacher. Isaac, just how much do you know? Momo asked Izuka who blushed lightly at the nickname I was teached by world best detective, still could be better. Wear thieves and meet me at training field. When everybody got their eyes out pointed at Izuku. Wayne, you were first at both exams, you'll be first year representative. Now, what was your record in ball throw in middle school? Aizawa asked throwing him the ball. I was homeschooled. Izuku replied as he caught the ball. Whatever, throw it just stay in the circle. Izuku threw it as hard as he could. 102 meters. What? I erased your quirk. Izuku and Momo smirked. I'm quirkless. Izuka said confidently. What? Almost whole class shouted. What the actual buck are you doing in hero department? You shouldn't even be here. Get out, you're expelled. Aizawa said in cold tone. No. Izuka replied. What was that? No. I won't go. I worked harder than any of my classmates, no. For last eleven years I worked harder than anyone from this school. Principal knew what he did when he accepted me. I haven't turned my dream to become a hero when I was four, and I never will do that. Everyone, Aizawa and Momo included, was taken aback by that speech. Suddenly a bare rat-like creature stomped out of the shadows slowly clapping. Ah, uh, Principal, great to meet you. What is the challenge for me to stay at school? Izuku smirked at the little creature who simply smirked back. Ah, uh, an intelligent one I see. All of Izuku's classmates' sweat dropped. We have two challenges. Meanwhile your classmates will end this little curic apprehension test, and you will come back here for the last challenge. You'll have to show Snipe you can shoot properly, then seduce Midnight and we'll come back here for you to beat the living shit out of your homeroom teacher. Ha 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 cough fine for you. Said Principal with a sudden personality change and sadistic grin, which Izuku simply returned. Can we skip to the last one? I'll call my butler for my gun at the meantime. Izuku took his hand to the face and whispered something. Okay, Aizawa-sensei, shall we go hand on hand or with weapons? Let's go hand on hand, I'll go easy on your kid. Izuku simply smirked. Now, since you have your suit on, may I? Be my guest. Izuku smirked, touched his heels two times and suddenly a costume appeared on him. I have to thank Chala for that suit one more time, it never ceases to amaze me. Izuka said to himself as he readied himself for a fight. Go, Principal Niza shouted as two heroes ran at each other with fists readied, suddenly Aizawa's capture gear wrapped around Izuku. You really thought you could do something to me? Please, kid you're nobody useless, corkless punk and I'm a pro hero. You could never won. Izuka began to laugh sadistically. You're scared, aren't ya? Let's step up with the challenge. If you win, I'll give up on my dreams and be a businessman like my father. But if I'll win, I won't only be a student here, but Mr. Aizawa will have to make an official speech that he got his ass beaten by a fifteen-year-old. Is it fine with you, principal? Niza simply nodded. And you? Yare Serhead? Izuku knew how to get on his nerves. I'm in, and since I already won, get out. Angry Aizawa said as he tightened grip of his capture grip. First mistake, never underestimate your opponent. Izuku smirked as his wings cut his capture grip. My suit isn't only for looks, you know. Izuka flew high into the air and then dived into Aizawa with such speed that Aizawa got knocked into the wall. Is that the end? Asked a blonde with a lightning bolt on his bangs. 
We're far from done, Izuku and Niza said in unison. Aizawa jumped from now bent wall straight to his student, throwing punches at him with such speed Izuku couldn't have catch up. Izuku flew back and got on one knee. That's all you got, kid? I'm not really surprised. Aizawa said in cold tone with a bit of confidence. Suddenly Niza started lagging dramatically. Get ready, Aizawa. It was good to have you as a teacher at Yure. Izuka got up and knuckled his fists. My turn. Izuka flew into Aizawa, kneeling his gut. Then before Aizawa flew into wall again, Izuka flew behind him and uppercut him, sending out a bit of kinetic energy he stored inside. Aizawa was flying high. Suddenly Izuka came nest to him. It ends here. He punched him into the ground, sending all of his kinetic energy. Aizawa was punched so hard he made a crater upon contact. Izuka flew to the ground couple of seconds later. He didn't even break a sweat. He smirked towards the principal. When can I expect the video? Niza smirked. I already like you. Do you play chess? Alfred came with Izuka's gun alongside his father. Bruce saw Izuka laying on the floor, talking to principal. All Might was doing an apprehension test and there was a big crater on the field with some brunette guy laying inside. Izuka, what is this? Bruce pointed at the crater. I will explain, Mr. Wayne. Meanwhile, you, Izuku, go to the shooting range. Your second challenge will await you there. Izuka came to the shooting range, dressed in his pea suit, with his gun loaded, two more magazines in his hand. He knew exactly what to do. You have, oh, you have your own gun. Do whatever you want to then, Snipe said as he leaned on a wall. Izuka shooted his first magazine with what seemed like pure chaos. Then he reloaded, signed and shooted at head with such precise that every bolt HIG the exact same spot every time. He did it with two other magazines. Snipe was confused. What was that first magazine, kid? Izuka smiled. Stand behind me and slowly walk backwards. Snipe did what he said. Chaos of bullets slowly merged into a done sign. Snipe was shocked. He smiled underneath the mask. Nice. Lastly, he had to seduce Midnight. Izuka's class was watching him since he took his time at the shooting range. They ended their apprehension tests. He came inside the room where Midnight was. He asked, No physical contact or do you want pure bliss come on ya, miss? He asked as he took his shirt off. Midnight was already blushing hard. What on earth is going on? I've seen so much, and yet he makes me blush. I'm getting old. Midnight thought to herself, Momo was fee as with pure jealousy. Other girls were blushing madly, Momo wasn't an exception. Izuki came closer, his face was centimeters from hers, Midnight wasn't controlling herself, she kissed him on the lips. When everybody saw it, they had mixed feelings, some blushed, some were jealous that they couldn't be on Izuka's place, and Momo was just angry. She stepped out of the observatory room, came inside the room that Izuku and Midnight were and pulled Izuku off Midnight. She stormed out of the room, pulling Izuku after her. How could she? It was your first kiss. I wanted to take it. Wait, what am I saying? Momo blushed after thinking that. And put a shirt on, exhibitionist. Izuku looked at Momo with a smirk. Don't like what you see? He flexed his muscles to get on Momo's nerves. Momo blushed deeper. Izuka changed into his uniform, came into the class and immediately got surrounded by his classmates. Some were amazed by his suit, some by his passion, some said he was mainly. And a brown-haired girl approached him. You saved me at the entrance exam. You were busy earlier so I waited. Thank you very much. She hugged him. My name is Ochako Uraraka. Nice to meet you, Uraraka. As you might know, I'm Izuka Wayne. Hope we get along. But there was one by haired kid who watched him from distance. He was jealous of his relationship with Momo, and that he was angry he was better than him. Izuka got out of school, Katsuki to his left, and Momo to his right. Come on, Katsuki, I've got a lot to tell you. Chapter 5 Come on, Katsuki, I've got a lot to tell you. Izuka was coming home with Katsuki and Momo. They both called their parents and agreed to meet Wayne's at dinner. Katsuki saw Momo was really close to Izuku, he had to ask. So, what are you two? Both of them looked at him askingly. You two seem very close. Too close if you asked me. Now spill it. 
Momo blushed lightly. Izuka smirked, pulled her closer. We're a couple. He winked towards her as she blushed deep red, then turned towards Katsuki and raised his eyebrow. Jelly? Ash blonde firecracker smirked as well. Fists bumped him and they walked towards his home. When they came inside, after taking off their boots they walked to the living room, to see Wayne's, Yeoyorsis and Bakudis talking while drinking wine. Good morning Mr. and Mrs. Yayorozu. Great to see you again Auntie Uncle. Izuka said as he came in first, Bakudis looked at him in disbelief. If it wasn't for Katsuki, they would never recognize him. Mitsuki Bakugu, the Lady of Rage herself came towards Granette, smirked and pulled him in tight hug. You grew up so much. Now tell me, what happened Inko never told me what happened. You mean my mother? I would like to meet her one day, if it's okay with you father. Izuka said looking towards his father, who was greeting Izuka's friends. Bruce simply nodded. Just be careful Izuku. Izuka smiled. Alfred came in with dinner. They sat at the table. Then Masaru Bakugu, the only stable Shizukli in Bakugu household, asked a very delicate question. So, why did you adopt Izuku, Mr. Wayne? Izuka looked at his father. May I? Bruce smiled and nodded. When my biological mother found out I was quirkless, she gave up on me totally. She left me in a park bench all to myself. Father walked the same park. When he bumped at me, he tried to give me back to her. But she told us she wanted to raise a hero and since I was quirkless she thought I won't be one. I was beyond depressed. Father took care of me, raised like his own, and he never gave up on me. So I've decided to never give up either. He gave me everything I could ever want. He did so much to me I will never lose respect to him, and even though I won't be able to repay him, I'll do my best to be best hero there could ever be. Izuka said with tears in his eyes. They ate the dinner, and it was time for Bakudis to leave the house. Thank you for your hospitality. If you'll ever need anything, tell Katsuki and I'll do my best to help you, okay Izuku? Mitsuki asked. Of course, auntie. Izuka hugged her, so he did to Uncle Masaru, then came towards Katsuki. Hang in there, firecracker. See ya tomorrow. He took his hand forward, Katsuki smirked. Yeah, see ya tomorrow, Casanova. And so they left. Bruce and Izuka came back to the table, where Selina was showing photos of young Izuka training with his brothers. They trusted Yeriorisus, so they lifted the veil of secrecy a bit, and told them that Hick, Jay and Tim were vigilantites in USA. Izuka looked once again at the onyx-eyed beauty and his hearth skipped a bit. Momo, could we talk in private? Momo obviously nodded in agreement. They went outside, to the gardens, they sat on a wooden bench. Izuka blushed and started. At the ground. So, I want to tell you that. I've had this feeling in me. Whenever you are close, whenever you leave, I, I'm not sure if you feel like this as well. But I I think I love you, Momo. Even though you were my friend for such a short period of time, I've got attached to you. I don't know if it will ruin our friendship, but I have to say this. Momo Jayoroza, I love you, he said looking at her. She looked surprised. Suddenly she started crying. Izuka Wayne, you scared the life out of me. I've felt something like this as well, but I was scared that I'll ruin everything. I might not be your first kiss. She said through tears, coming closer. But you'll be mine, and that's all I care about. Before Izuka could do anything she kissed him, Izuka melted into the kiss fast. The kiss was full of passion, love and no lust was found in it. They kissed each other until they had to break for air. Pant Momo? Will you make me the happiest fifteen-year-old on earth and become my girlfriend? Momo smiled widely. I'd love to, Izuku. She sat closer and hugged him. Okay, you can come out, guys. Suddenly Elder Wayne's and Yeriorisus came from behind a bush. How did he? Inaki looked at Bruce askingly. Just roll with it. He picked it from his father. Selina chuckled and Bruce pouted. So are we in laws yet? Slightly drunk Hisashi asked. Izuka looked at Momo and smirked. Soon, Momo blushed a little. They went inside again. It was time for Yeriorisus to come back home. But Hisashi a bit more drunk. That wine was so good spoke. Maybe you guys would like to stay together for a night? You know, since you'll get married either way. Momo blushed in fifty shades of red at the though of sleeping with her boyfriend Izuku simply smirked. If it's fine with you and Momo then I'm sure we'll be more than happy to host her at WMJ. 
Momo looked at her parents with a shy smile. I mean, if I have my cosmetics and my pajamas, I'd love to sleep here. Both parents looked at each other and smiled. I'll make sure that Sonade brings your belongings here. Just come back home after school tomorrow. Momo nodded and came closer to Izuka once again. See you tomorrow, Hisashi. Goodbye, Anaki. Wayne said their goodbyes to Yoyorisis. Momo and Izuka went to Izuka's room. It's 5 p.m. We have a lot of time until it's time for sleep. Would you like some casual clothes? I know that uniforms can be uncomfortable. Izuka asked as he took his uniform jacket. His shirt was tight and his muscles were seen through it. Momo, after seeing it, blushed and started drooling. Like what you see, darling? Izuka asked. If you took it off, I would like the show even more. Momo whispered, as she looked away blushing and pouting. Izuka heard what she said. He slowly unbuttoned his shirt. Like this? Izuka said slowly dropping his shirt onto the floor. He came closer to her. She looked at his hard abs and his muscles. Izuka placed his hand on her chin, turned her face toward as his. My eyes are up here beautiful. Momo smirked, got on her toes and kissed him. Placing her hands on his neck, he meted into the kiss. His hands wandered to her waist. His hands slowly reached her bottom and lightly groped it, causing Momo to moan. He took his opportunity and placed his tongue into her mouth. The tongues battled for dominance. Izuka obviously won. He explored the unknown territory and slowly claimed it. Momo pushed him a little onto the bed and laid on him kissing him still kissing him. Hey Greeny your girl's clothes are here. Jason came onto the room. Kicking the door open, he saw what was going on the bed. Buck buck shit now it's just me. Kill me. I'll die a virgin either way. He screamed as he left the bag inside the room. Leaving the room, he said. At least use a protection. I don't want to be an uncle and I'm pretty sure nor Bruce nor Selena wants to be a grandparents yet. Izuka quickly got up from now blushing Momo and closed the door. Damn, he would get on with Katsuki. Izuka jokingly said, meanwhile Momo was freaking out. I'm done. I'm so done. She starts muttering Izuka quickly got her out of it by pecking her on the lips. Thank you? I'll go get changed. No, I'll go. If you go to the bathroom there is a chance Jay will go in there just like he came here, and to avoid that I'll wait behind the doors. He got out of the room. After some time Momo opened the door, he came inside to see her in his hoodie with a bat symbol on it. It was a bit too big for her but she liked how she felt in it. Black leggings and white ankle socks. Her uniform with tights were folded next to the bag with her things. Beautiful. But you still have to give that hoodie back. Izuka smirked. I know, it was laying on the chair and it looked so comfy. You aren't mad at me or anything like that, baby? No, it's fine. Well, time to change. Izuka once again closed the door, took his sweatpants and dark green t-shirt with. Why so serious? And Joker's face on it out of the wardrobe, he took his shirt off once again and put the t-shirt on. He wanted to change his pants as well, but he might have forgotten about his girlfriend. Without turning around, he said, you're drooling again, honey. He turned around just to see Momo wiping her face with his hoodie's sleeve. He turned around once again and stated to unbuckle his belt from his pants. He slowly took them off and quickly put sweatpants on. Sorry to ruin the show. I don't really like to be in a spotlight. He started folding his clothes. The night came by fast. Izuku and Momo talked to each other, cuddled and watched some old-timey romance movies. They slept in each other's arms like they were newlyweds. They loved each other, and they only cared about that. Chapter 6 They loved each other, and they only cared about that. Next day came, sun rose, beam of light flew towards Izuka's face, he rubbed his eyes, trying to remember what happened yesterday. Izuka felt some weight on his chest, he lowered his head just to see Momo, snoring cutely. He smiled, looked to his right, clock displayed 6.30. One and a half hour to get to school. He played with her hair, looking at her in awe damn, I'm so lucky. Izuka thought as he felt Momo move, she opened her eyes, rubbed them and looked where she was. She looked up and noticed Izuka smiling at her, morning beautiful. He placed his hand on her chin, pulled her higher and kissed her passionately. Jay came bursting into the room, green awake. He saw them making out. For Buck Sake. He got out raging. Ha, huh, well that happened. Momo said jokingly. We need to get ready, I can do your hair. 
while you brush your teeth to make it faster, baby. Izuka got her hairband on his hand, like it was a bracelet. She obviously nodded in agreement, got up from his chest, took her uniform and went to the bathroom. Izuka followed her close behind. She started to brush her teeth. He combed her hair. Then he did the usual, the spiky ponytail on top with the bangs on right side of her head. He poked her cheek and then began to brush his teeth as well. She finished earlier than him so she hugged him from behind. As Izuku finished brushing his teeth, he got out of bathroom, to let Momo get changed and to get changed as well. They met downstairs, their backpacks on their backs. Alfred, could you give us a ride to school? Izuku asked Alfred who was currently making eggs and bacon for everyone for breakfast. Everybody quickly eats and then Momo and Izuku went to school with Alfred. In the limo Momo looked at Izuku and asked, Izu, are we you know? Official? Izuku smiled. Only if you want us to be honey. Momo smiled and hugged Izuka tightly. Then we're coming into the school as a officially first couple of class 1A. She smiled widely and pecked his cheek. They went through the school holding hands, gaining few glares of jealousy. When they came into the classroom, everyone glared at them. They both simply replied, Hi guys. At the same time, they sat next to each other. Since there were only two empty seats guess why. They sat on their places and some students began to circle them. Yairo Zuwain, why were you holding hands? Gaining attention of whole class, even Todoroki who was looking out the window Momo smiled widely and came closer to Izuku. I think that'll make for a reply. Before he could do anything she kissed him on the lips. They melted into the kiss and kissed until Mr. Aizawa came into the room full of band-aids. Stop with the PDA or you'll be expelled. Izuku knew he was lying and scared of him. But Momo was slightly scared so she came back to her seat. Aizawa cleared his throat. Wayne, I wanted to say I'm sorry for my behavior yesterday. I hope you'll forgive me and continue learning in Yue. Izuku stood up from his seat, came in front of Aizawa and bowed. I should be the one apologizing. I went overboard. And I would love to continue learning here. Izuku straightened himself and smiled. Aizawa took his hand out. We good? Izuku chuckled, sure. He shook his hand and got to his seat. Okay, now. You need a class president and a vice president. Choose one before home remains. Aizawa said as he got in his sleeping bag. Pick me. Most of the class erupted. Ida stood up. We should vote. This way everybody will have fair chance. And so they did. Momo created a basket and some paper strips. After counting of the voices the table was looking like this. Izuku 5. Momo 3. Rest of class, 1 or 0. Izuku took Momo's hand and they got to the front of class. Looks like destiny choose to connect us once again darling. Izuku said as they were going there. After a speech of we'll do our best they sat down once again. Who do you think will teach us heroics class? They sat in classroom. The lunch was disrupted by alarm but Izuku grappled to the ceiling and calmed everybody down. Suddenly doors went blown away. Izuka reacted fastly and threw an electric batarang at the doors. All Might went inside. I'm he. He was cut by electrocution. Izuka quickly deactivated the electricity and bowed in front of Hiro. Sorry sensei, instincts took over me. All Might looked at the teenager and smiled wider if it's even possible. No problem young Wayne. Now get to your seat please. Izuka did as he was told, then All Might asked to meet him at the field beta, in their hero costumes. In the men's changing room, Izuku got to his briefs and started putting on shoes. Dude, I don't think that's how you do it, Kaminari said. I don't want my uniform all messed up, you know. It confused most of boys in the changing room, but Izuku tucked his heels two times and his costume appeared on him. TSK. Show off. Bakuga said, Izuku smirked and got out to the field beta. He talked to All Might for a bit, and his class started to get out of the tunnel. When he saw Momo's suit he was taken aback but angry at the same time. He made a sphere around them, using his wings and whispered. This weekend we're going to Wakanda to my good friend. She made my suit and she will make one for you, okay honey? Momo nodded. Great, now. He kissed her forehead. Remember you're mine. She blushed a bit, then smirked and kissed him on lips passionately. Only your baby. Izuka smirked and deactivated his sphere. Okay class, today we will be doing battle training. 
Chapter 7 Okay class, today we will be doing battle training. At this point Izuku was pumped up, he stood by Momo, his hand on her waist, ignoring glares of jealousy and hatred towards them. All Might continued. You will be splitted in teams of two. Villains versus heroes. Heroes will have to either retrieve nuclear weapon, which villains will defend or capture villains in special capture tape. Heroes will be at time disadvantage as well as they will only have only 15 minutes to do so. The teams will be drawn via lottery, so it should be fair. All Might said as he placed his one hand on his hips and gave them thumbs up with the other. Izuka got paired with Ida and they were heroes. They were up against Katsuki and Todoroki, who were villains. So what's our plan, Wayne? Ida asked. Bakugu will come for me, that's for sure. You'll leave him to me and run to find the bomb and try to fight Todoroki. When I'm finished with that firecracker I'll come help you, you okay with this? Asked Izuka as Ida simply nodded. Meanwhile. Tell me, do you think Wayne and Yayorozu are a pair? Todoroki asked Bakugu. Yeah, I knew first. They told me yesterday. Why the buck do you want to know? Bakugu glared at Icy Hot B.O.I. It doesn't matter. What's our plan? Todoroki asked. You stay here and I'll rip the bird's wings and bucking eat them raw. He said as he stepped out of the room. Wait, you'll eat them while. All righty, five minutes of preparations are done, heroes. Go, All Might said via speakers. Izuku and Ida proceeded towards the fake building. Bakuga surprised them by attacking around the corner. This gave Izuku some kinetic energy to store. Ida run, tell me when you'll find the bomb. Ida did as Izuku said. Bakugu and Wayne stared at each other. They both smirked as they ran at each other at full speed, blocking each other's punches and kicks. Izuku gained a lot of kinetic energy, to the point where every punch Bakugu threw at him caused small shockwave of energy because he couldn't store more. Izuku got tired of this and sent massive shockwave that sent Katsuki to a wall. Sorry firecracker but Ida is quiet, that can only mean one thing. Izuku said as he ran higher via stairs. When he got to fifth floor he saw it was almost fully covered in ice. Izuku flew towards first open doors he saw, to not give Todoroki any information about his placement. He didn't know much about his quirk but he knew he could control ice and fire so getting information from his ice was possible. When he got out of the room, he saw Ada with frozen body and mouth. Only his eyes were moving he looked terrified. My hitchy father took away my normal childhood, and you took away my only childhood friend. You know, I wanted to confess to her when we get to UA but it looks you were quicker. Bravio Wayne. You took the only reason I wanted to live. Todoroki said as got out of the shadows he looked pissed. Todoroki, she isn't some kind of toy we'll toss around. It should be her decision. I'll accept it whatever it is cause I love her. Will you do the same? Izuka said pointing at him. No. I'll make her love me. If there's no you, she'll love me. So all I need to do is freeze you to death. Todoroki said as he sent massive ice wave at Izuku. Some frostbites were now shown on his body. Izuku used some of his energy to get rid of the ice. You know, I prefer warm temperatures. He said as he took his bar out and spinned it. When he held it in place again it turned into trident. Izuka rushed at him. Todoroki sent another ice wave just for it to be blown away by his energy wave. Izuka placed Todoroki's arm between his trident's blades and bent her to the point where it could be broken very easily. Todoroki you're trembling. If you want to use only half of your power cause I'm corkless then you're an absolute idiot. Use it. Use all of it Todoroki it's your power you bucker. Izuku screamed as Todoroki used his left side, massive flame bursted out of him and melted most of the ice in the room, including Ida. Idea, run for the weapon, I'll get Todoroki. Izuku screamed as he threw some batarangs at Todoroki, Ida rushed at the weapon. He touched it, and all might scream through the speakers. Hero team wins. Ida sighed in relief but he suddenly heard scream. When he turned around he saw Izuku with his trident in his stomach area and Todoroki covered in his quirk coming towards him with fireball ready to shoot. Ida wanted to run at him, but suddenly Aizawa and All Might went through the windows. Aizawa quickly erased Todoroki's quirk and All Might took him down by chopping his neck. They got Izuku to the infirmary where he lied unconscious for a couple of hours. He woke up to a piercing pain in his stomach area. 
He rubbed his eyes and tried to sit but he felt some weird weight on his chest. He looked down to the view of sleeping Momo, slightly drooling. He chuckled and played with her hair. She moved a bit and said, Few more minutes Aizu. But she suddenly realized what happened and she opened her eyes and hugged him tightly. I'm so, so, so sorry about what happened is. She got cut by Izuka kissing her. They broke the kiss for air. Momo quickly buried her head in his neck and silently cried. I thought you were dead. What would I do without you? Izuka patted her head and hugged her like the world was about to end. Recovery girl got inside and saw him wide awake. You finally woke up, Sonny. I couldn't heal you or you'd die, but since you're well rested now, you can be finally healed. Izuku deactivated his costume and RG kissed his wound. It was cured quickly. Momo of course blushed at his abs and made him a shirt to wear. They hugged and then Izuka asked her. You have heard what Todoroki said? Momo nodded. Everybody heard? The whole conversation was heard in the control room All Might took us. Do you still want to be with me? Izuka asked as he dropped his head down. He was met with a slap to the face and quickly afterwards a passionate kiss on the lips. When she broke the kiss she clenched her hands on his head. I'll never leave your side you idiot. Chapter 8 I'll never leave your side you idiot. Izuka had tears in his eyes, not from the slap, even though it hurt like a hitch, but from the fact that Momo won't leave him. He hugged her and silently cried. I love you Momo. She looked him in the eyes and smiled. Where the buck I asked my son and who did this to him? They heard Enji Selina screaming in English behind the door. Todoroki's are so bucked. Izuku whispered to Momo who looked at him confused. Selina bursted into the room and hugged Izuka tightly. Who did this to you? Who is his father? I'll kill them both. She screamed in English. His name is Shoto Todoroki, son of Enji Todoroki, number two hero endeavor. We'll pay them a visit. Bruce said as he entered the room with Jay. Tim and Hick who were in their hero costumes. Ah, uh, you must be Momo. Izuka told us many things about you, and so did Jay. Said Hick pointing at Red Hood, who took his helmet off. Buck off Hick, Greeny and his girl are in better relationship than you and Cory haha. Jay screamed in his face. Are you forgetting her crush on Izuka, Jay? She was his first kiss after all. Said Tim as Izuka was sweating bullets. Momo glared at him in jealousy. Izuku, who is Cory? She's my fiancé. Member of Titans, hero organization in USA. Izuku were on a couple of missions with them and stole not only her hearth but ravens as well. And she was his first kiss, cause he speaks Japanese and she can learn languages from a kiss. She was mine first kiss as well, that's how she learned English. Hick said sitting on a chair next to Momo. Bruce, I think it's time to tell her. Selina said to Bruce who nodded and asked him for a smoke bomb. He threw it at the ground below him and Selina as the smoke went away. Bruce and Selina were now Batman and Catwoman. But I think you already had suspicions about my identity, right Jido Rosa? Bruce asked Momo. She simply nodded. The doors opened once again as Principal Nizu and All Might went inside. They were ready to fight but Bruce took his cowl off. I believe our secret is safe with you. Nizu smirked and nodded. They said them what Detective Sakachi got from Todoroki. Everything about his abusive father, his mother, and his mental state. Izuka thought about great idea which involved Momo in it. Knock knock Enji Todoroki, number two hero endeavor was training when he heard knocking on door of his house, he picked his shirt from the floor and went to open the door. Good morning. Is Shoto here? I've decided to leave this quirkless piece fo shit for him. We can make children whose quirk will be the greatest ever seen. Momo said in determined voice. Enji smiled and let her inside. They get to Shoto's room and Endeavor started knocking on the door. What do yo? Shoto was cut off by Momo hugging him. Shoto we can finally be together. I dumped that corkless trash for you. I was so blind. Forgive me my love. Shoto had tears coming down his face and he hugged her tightly. He placed his hand on her chin and before he could kiss her, somebody knocked on the door once again. Todoroki's and Momo opened the door just to see angry Bruce and Selina. My son had killed himself just because of you, he said pointing at Momo. Leave her you idiot. She is my future daughter-in-law. I endeavor, future hero number one will never let you touch her. Suddenly they heard a voice. You'll never be number one hero if you'll be in jail. 
Todoroki's looked behind them just to see Jay, Tim, Hick and Izuku in their hero costumes. And as for you Shoto, I don't have anything to you, just give me back my girlfriend. Izuku said calmly. You must be stupid. Mr. Wayne, take your... Shoto looked behind. He saw Batman and Catwoman instead of Bruce and Selina and he was confused. What the just then Momo placed Quirk restraining handcuffs on his and his father's hands. Izuku came closer to Momo. Great job, honey. She deactivated his eye mask, looked deeply inside his eyes and kissed him passionately. She broke the kiss and looked at Shoto. If you think I'll leave him to you, you are very wrong. Take them, boys. Momo said as three ex-Robins grinned and started to beat the living shit out of Todoroki's. One week later Endeavor was put in prison. Todoroki was still at Yue but he was under strict control. After that both Izuku and Momo forgave him and they became close friends with him. Their squad was now Izuku, Momo, Katsuki, Todoroki, Jairu who was Momo's close friend and Denki, who Momo and Izuku are trying to get together with Jairu. Izuku and Momo came to WMJ one day after class to hang out. They came inside just to meet Yoyorisus and Wayne's conversating. Hey guys, they said to their parents. Tell us how about you two live together. Chapter 9 Tell us how about you two live together. Bruce's words took both teenagers away. They were surprised and Momo's mind already got filled with nasty thoughts about her living and sleeping with her boyfriend. Um, I dunno. I mean I don't have anything against it so it's up to Momo really. Izuka said as Momo's eyes already filled with joy, yes, she screamed jumping and punching air out of joy. Everyone else in the room simply chuckled and smiled at her showcase of joy. After realizing what she did she blushed madly, got back on her two feet and tried to regain her calm. I mean cough if Suzu is fine with this. Everybody sweat dropped Bruce then stood up and said, we can buy you a medium-sized house five minutes to school. But we have one condition. Momo and Izuka looked at him. What is it father slash Mr. Wayne? Bruce smirked. You won't have any maids, and it's up to you to clean the house and get groceries. We will only give you money. How about that? Izuka looked at Momo as she looked at him. They both nodded at each other. We're fine with it. They said in unison. Should we start packing? Their parents were kinda confused but happy as well. Yes. Since tomorrow is Friday, you will come to your houses for the cartons, and then Alfred will ride you to your new house. Or do you want to ride you there, Izuku? Bruce asked looking at his son. You mean the last year's birthday gift father? Izuku looked askingly at Bruce. Yeah, we've just imported it, so you can drive it to school tomorrow and go to your new house as well said Bruce as he tossed the Zuka keys to his Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 that him and Selena got him for his 16th birthday. He has a driving license from USA so they decided to give him some independence. Let's say it's dark green. Izuka thought for a second and smiled. We can go there with my car, K. He looked at Momo who nodded. After that they began packing his stuff, then they went to Yayorosa mansion and packed her stuff. Next day at school flew rather quickly. Momo and Izuku drove there with his car and they came back home the same way. Ida of course scolded him about driving without license, but Izuku quickly shut him by shoving his license into his eyes. They came to their new house, since they packed their stuff to the car yesterday and looked at it in awe. They saw Bruce and Hisashi outside, waving at them, they parked in the gedge, which Bruce opened and came outside with the boxes. The place is furnitured so you don't have to worry about beds, shelves and so on. In the gedge is a secret switch to a basement where you can store your hero stuff later on. Then Izuka remembered something. Oh, shoot father? Could you call King Chalo that we will visit him tomorrow? Momo could use new suit and because if this whole to-do drama I forget about it. Or you just want to meet Shuri? Bruce teased. Sai I hate you. Izuka mumbled under his breath as Momo had already a knife in hand. Who's Shuri Zuzu? She asked with a psychotic grin. Stop with that Yandra Momo she's a friend. Girlfriend Bruce teased. She proposed to you after all. And I believe that your suit was a wedding gift from Chala. Father, Izuku unconsciously got into his suit. Zuzu. Izuku looked towards Momo. I'll have to make you mine again. She said as she get closer to Izuku, 
Then she got on her toes and kissed him passionately. Yayaroza's and Wayne's left Izuku and Momo's house. They were alone. Momo asked Izuku to get into the bedroom in ten minutes. After ten minutes, Izuku heard her voice from upstairs. Zuzu. Izuku got from his chair and came into the bedroom. When he opened the door, he saw naked Momo on the bed. Lemon skipped. They finished panting hardly. They lied next to each other and looked at their eyes. I love you, they said in unison. They slept hugged into each other, knowing this was just another step of their relationship. Chapter 10 They slept hugged into each other, knowing this was just another step of their relationship. Next day, they woke up feeling refreshed with Momo cuddled to Izuku's chest. They got up and readied themselves. Izuku did Momo's hair just like always. Even though it was Saturday, Izuku asked Momo to get into her hero costume. They stayed in front of the house, in their hero costumes in silence, until Momo asked, Aiza, why are we here? Izuku didn't say anything, he simply got closer, hugged her with one arm and pointed the other arm into the sky. Momo didn't see when he got his grappling hook in hand, he shot it upwards, scaring Momo a bit. Aizu? What are you doing? She was cut off by the clang, sound of the hook attaching to something. She looked at Izuku in fear and mouthed. Don't why dare. Izuku simply smirked and tapped the trigger, the gun started to propel them upwards. When they came into the invisible ship, Momo looked like she saw a ghost. Meanwhile Izuku simply smiled, he looked around. Come on my king, it won't work on me. He said looking around even more. Suddenly Chala appeared in his suit next to Momo. I know but it will work on her. Momo started screaming and hugging Izuku's arm in her breasts of shock. Izuku and Chala shared a laugh. When Momo regained herself, Izuku and Chala made their handshake which consisted of a five, back five, fist, Wakandan symbol and a bow. Momo looked angry at Chala and shouted, Who do you think you are? Izuku interrupted her. He's the king of Wakanda. One of the leaders in technology in the whole world and the pro-hero Black Panther Honey. Momo was freaked out and immediately bowed in front of Chala. I'm sorry for it, my king. Chala cluckled and deactivated his helmet. It's okay, Miss Wayne. You are wife of my best friend. You are as welcome in Wakanda as he is. This made Izuku smirk and Momo to blush. I'm not his wife. Izuku put his hand on her waist and stood behind her. You are the love of my life. We live together. I don't think we need to be married to be called wife and husband, my sweet Momo. Izuka kissed top of her head and hugged her tightly. Chala awed by the showcase of affection of young couple, then smiled widely. Shuri won't be happy about that Izuku, you know? Izuka's sweat dropped remembering what happened yesterday. Yeah. Well, if anything happens, like Momo's yander aside going crazy again, we leave rather quickly. Izuka said looking at his beloved in his arms. Momo simply smiled. Don't worry, Aizu. I won't do that again anytime soon. She then hugged him tightly, with her head going into crook of his neck. When they arrive, they were met by Nakia and Shuri, waving at them and the king's guards on sides. They get out of the airplane, Momo in the middle with Izuku and Chala on her sides. She was hugging Izuku's arm in between her breasts. Shuri saw it and ran to them. Leave my Zuzu alone. Izuku readied his staff and pointed it towards Shuri. Stop. How many times do we have to get through this? Izuka looked at Momo who was holding him like the world was about to end. Ah, uh, Queen Nakia, nice to see you again. Izuka said as he packed his staff into one of his pockets in his utility belt. Nakia got closer as well. Izuku, great to see you. Who's that girl there? She pointed at Momo. Izuka smirked and said, My wife. Momo blushed madly and showed the ring. Izuku and Chala asked her to make in the plane. It was gold ring with nice green and black gems on it. Shuri had tears and eyes. I'll go prepare lab. And ran away. Most likely crying. Izuka looked at Chala and said, Sorry, I guess. Chala shrugged. It's not your fault. Stuff like that happens, right, Nakia? He looked at Nakia who smiled and nodded. They arrived at the lab. Momo was awestruck all the time. When they came inside Shuri was again all beaming in joy. Momo, right? I think you know me. I'm Shuri Izuka's ex. After that Ramonda came and Karate chopped her in head. Shuri's sorry about her Momo. 
She's jealous of Izuku. I'm Ramanda, mother of this super duo. She said as she pointed to Chalice scolding Shuri. Shuri took Momo for a trip around the lab. So, what he's like? Shuri asked. Momo wasn't sure what she meant. Pardon? Shuri smirked. In bed, of course. Momo blushed but then smirked as well. Godly body, godly in bed. They got to the showcase with a new suit for Momo. Shuri opened it, I hope it fits. I redesigned your previous so hope you like it. It has many traits Suka's suit has. It also stores kinetic energy and can make huge waves of energy. The panel on wrist has database which updates daily. It shows what anything you think of is made of. The belts are for snacks, since your quirk bases on lipids. Shuri said as Momo got dressed into her new suit. Momo tried it on. It works fine. Thank you, Shuri. Shuri smiled and got to another gauntlet on the table. And this one is for Zuku. It has built-in grappling hooks, so he won't need his lame gun anymore. It also has communicator, which communicates with the panel on your suit and the communications can't be disrupted or jammed by anything. Shuri said giving her Izuku's suit part. They all said their goodbyes, hugs. Shuri kissed Izuku's cheek much to Momo's displeasure and Wayne's once again got into the plane. On the plane Izuku got text message from Bakugas. They invited them for dinner. His biological mother will be there too. Izuku frowned which didn't go unnoticed by Momo. Eyes is everything fine? Looks like we have family reunion tomorrow. Izuku said hugging his girlfriend tightly. Chapter 11 Looks like we have family reunion tomorrow. Izuku said hugging his girlfriend tightly. Momo wasn't sure what was going to happen tomorrow but with Izuku next to her, she was sure it will be fine. They got home, dressed into some casual stuff and placed their costumes on hideable stands in the garage along with Izuku's equipment. They showered not together hentai baka and got to bed together. Momo rubbed her belly. Do you think we'll have a baby? Izuku smiled. I hope so. One more reason for me to love you. Izuku said as he kissed her on the forehead. Momo giggled and turned around with him. Now she lied on his chest. Good night, honey. Momo said as she was quick asleep. Izuku played a bit with her hair and thought what tomorrow will bring before snuggling into Momo and sleeping like a baby. Next day they woke up pretty quickly. After a quick makeout session they got dressed. As always Momo brushed her teeth as Izuku did her hair. But it was special occasion so he didn't make her a ponytail as always. He just styled it. Momo as always finished earlier than him so she went and dressed herself. Izuka brushed his teeth and got to their bedroom just to see Momo in her underwear picking a dress. He smiled, took his shirt off and hugged her from behind. We have way too much time to go there honey. He gently bit her neck and smiled. She moaned a bit and blushed lightly. She smiled as well. I know. She moved her hand over his godly body. You really want children, don't you? Izuka smiled. Yes, please. At least three of them. Momo blushed, and she was quite surprised. Three? Izuka nodded. Two boys and a girl. Momo smiled. Oh my. Let's get to war then. She quickly turned around in session which most porno sites would kill to have started. After two hours of restless hex they got off each other and went to shower. They showered together since they didn't have much time. They quickly dressed. Izuka went with a dark green suit with same color vest above plain white shirt and a black tie. Momo went with long red dress and necklace. Her untied hair were giving her plus fifty to looks. They got to his car and drove to Bakugu household. They entered with a bouquet of flowers. Mitsuki Bakugu who was dressed rather semi-casual with jeans shirt above black pencil dress answered the door. She took the flowers and showed them where the table was. They got to the dining room to see a small woman with dark green hair drinking wine with Masaru while Katsuki was just pouring them more. They were talking about something, when Katsuki saw Izuku and Momo. Finally you damn nerd. They almost finished the bottle, he said which turned all the attention to them. Izuku waved to Masaru. Hey uncle, Momo did the same. Good afternoon Mr. Bakugu. Then they looked at the little lady. I don't think we know each other. I'm Izuka Wayne and this is my fiancé, Momo Jayorozu. Katsuki smirked at him as Momo got her hand forward. It's nice to meet you, miss. The little lady had dollars in her eyes. 
My name is Inko Midoriya, but you both can just call me Inko, she said as she shook Momo then Izuka's hand. They sat to the dinner served by Mitsuki. Itadakimasu, they all screamed as they began to eat the food. Inko was clearly interested in the boy. So, how do you know Bakuga's young one? Izuka stopped chewing. Well, they were almost like a family before I left Japan. When I came back I got to the same class as that firecracker. He pointed at Katsuki. So we met again. Inko looked at him. Why would you leave such an amazing place like this? Izuka frowned. Well, my mother left me, and my father was from America. That's where I've spent most of my life. Why would she do this? Izuka looked her dead in the eyes. Because you thought I was useless kid, look where I am now. I go to Yue. I have an amazing fiancé and a great family. To be honest, I want to thank you. If you wouldn't left me, I would sit in your flat most likely getting beaten every now and then, and I would never met people who helped me become who I am now. After he said that, he bit to the food casually as ever. He and Momo finished the food as early as possible. Well, thanks for the food and eat, but we gotta go. The deeds are calling. Izuka took Momo by the hand. See ya at school firecracker, by Uncle Baku. They got out of the place as fast as possible. In their home, Izuka and Momo changed into more comfy attire. Well, that was something, Izuka said rubbing her belly, lying on each other. Yeah, you know, the deed needs to be done. She blushed hard saying that. Izuka started to kiss her neck. Let's do the deed then. Just as things were about to get interesting, Jason kicked the door, what's up, Greeny? When he got a glimpse of Momo's boob, he was in pure bliss. I can die at last. Izuka threw an electric batarang in his neck causing him to drop to floor flat. Izuku and Momo got downstairs, just to see Wayne's talking to All Might. What brings you here, Sensei? Izuku Wayne, would you like to be my successor? Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day. Bye.